This is Twit. This is interesting because today, this week, of course, Sam Altman and others testified in front of Congress, Congress. Yeah. on this very subject. Sam said, yeah, you got to regulate us. Uh, he also said, I make no money from this job, <laughs> which I thought was interesting. Um, well, the worst thing he said was you should license producers of AI. It was just frightening. I, frightening. I really think that's a bad. So this is it's a difficult thing. I understand and there's bias. I think the most important thing you could do is just get everybody's awareness raised yeah. as to the issue of bias and to get people who train these AIs to do the best they can to eliminate bias wherever, you know, um, you know, they should have had the stochastic parrots papers, authors there. Yeah, I agree. Not, there. not Sam Altman. Cause no. uh, as if he speaks for all AI now. Yeah. He's the CEO of uh, open AI. Incidentally, he's the next Mark Zuckerberg, which by the way, Mark Elon Biden Musk was. took credit for, he said, I, I started that. <laughs> of course. Wouldn't be here without started me. Started it and left, right? Wouldn't be yeah. here without me. Um, I don't know. So, Stacey, what do you think is the solution? It's not. Do you think licensing and regulation is the way? I think having some sort of oversight for. OK, there's different places where AI is going to be used. If AI is in a decision making body, I think every single regulatory agency right now needs to have an AI bureau where they start evaluating. So if it's if it's medicine, they need to be evaluating uh, medical programs. I mean, because like when we say regulate AI, I mean, what the hell are we talking about? Mm -hmm. It's so broad. Didn't wasn't um, this? I mean, remember the call for ethicists in medicine and other uh, areas. And I think the medical eth ethis ethicists exist and <laughs> some hospitals have them. Insurance companies need them for sure. They have IRBs. Is that what you're talking about? Well, yeah. I mean, this I whole notion. Have, they also hire ethicists on staff. Um, yeah. But even but things IRB. like, you know, the Homeland Security. Uh, uh, Internet inst research. Oh. Um, no, Institutional Review it's, Board. It's, oh, thank okay. you. Institutional Review Board. <laughs> Thank you. Is Did, Did I say internet? Did I say internet? Yes. I was like, your IRB is different than my IRB. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. Every I stands for internet. Would it, would, <laughs> it, would it be adequate to do what we did with medical ethicists to do that? Should we have AI ethicists? Uh, no, I just think you no. need to create a regulatory system that's part of every, like, that does the auditing functions, that handles complaints. So you haven't, like a, like a weights and measures, like if you get it, if your gas station doesn't give you the right amount of gas, you complain to the states. So if your algorithm gives you some crappy result and you feel hard done by it, yeah, the problem then you is have a place to go and you seek can restitution. Have a Bureau of Weights and Measures because a leader is a leader. It's a right. little bit harder to say, oh, I don't, that so AI is off. Here's, well, and off you, against what you have standard? to be. Yeah, you you have to. So here's what we're dancing around, and we need to stop dancing around. We need to stop thinking that AI is technology that is neutral. It isn't, and it, then government needs to say, okay, we also have to recognize that it's the government's role to set parameters. So we have to say, hey, as a government, we actually don't want AIs that you know, disproportionately affect black people. And this is a hard conversation. This isn't easy, well, but historically we've been able to, to throw the actual decision-making over the fence in by saying it's a technology thing. This, this is, isn't actually a technology. This thing. is why I brought up medical ethicists because instead of government regulation, what ensures, and of course they have a big lobby. So they went to Congress and said, you better not tell us what we can and cannot do you know med, uh, health insurance uh, you know th there's no standard for whether they're going to allow that procedure or not but that's why they said but we're going to have these ethicists who are going to help us make the decisions of who gets a heart when you have one heart and two people who need it that kind of thing you can't oh, okay. make that's hard to make a regulation right. on okay. in fact i wouldn't want Possibly. government to say well these are the 23 criteria that you have to use to judge who gets that one heart I'm not sure I'd want that. Is that the right way to go? No. I'll give you another yes. solution. That's tough. Ish. Or yes -ish. Here's the, so, <laughs> so the heart example is actually a really good one because you have an ethics board, actually. You have, right. I don't know who, like at it, it, uh, I think for hearts, and I don't know if this is 100 Yeah, you have transplant true. boards, yep. You have a transplant board who looks at cases on an individual basis. Mm. Now, here's what's important. 
It used to be. It's sometimes the transplant board members are public, right? So you can actually see if you're going to investigate like a particular heart donation, you could actually see like, did that person have like secret ties to them or not? Or who yeah. these people are. Right. Um, so there's an accountability metric there at both who's on the, like the board itself is an accountability metric for the hospital. Like we've, we've reviewed this and here's the decision making. There's accountability for who's making the decisions. So we know what their interests theoretically could be. I think that's important. And having something for that, uh, for, to evaluate an algorithm, because they're going to be in every organization and throughout society, you need to have those stationed in the appropriate places. So a hospital review board, you may have a review board deal with medical AI, and it would evaluate the outcomes. And this is what's important, the outcomes of the AI and see if those align with what the hospital itself wants to promote. Or maybe it's at the FDA level and the FDA is going to say on a, it'll have a, it'll audit the AIs and say, these are the decisions it's making. These are not in line with the outcomes we want to promote as the United States of America, right? So we have to establish those at different levels where AI is going to be implemented. You need to have it at like maybe your, I don't know, your attorney general at your state should be looking at police and judges, like AIs that are used in the criminal justice system. Like, this is hard. I'm going to suggest sort of a system. few other things. Yeah, go One is, and, and you're starting to get to it, Stacey, is that it's not about the AI, it's about the use, right? Mm -hmm. it's, and we yeah. talked about this on the show a lot, that if you use facial recognition to arrest someone with no other facts, that's, and that's a misuse of the data and so on. The yeah. other thing I would say, and I was about to write this up, I think it's time for us to demote the engineers. I think it's time for us to bring in other, not just ethicists as, as, as the ghetto of ethos, ethics, but to bring in the humanities, to bring in anthropologists and philosophers and sociologists and psychologists. Um, if you were going to start a newspaper today, you wouldn't put the pressman in charge. If you're going to start a TV station, you wouldn't put the camera operator in charge, though Jammer B would be a very good head for the company, I might add. <laughs> um, but the thing uh, is, Mr. Jarvis, we, we've been saying this for the last couple of years now. Why hasn't that changed? It, it's been put oh. out there in the public that, hey, the people that are in the in the the business of training these systems need more uh, diversity within mm -hmm. the departments. Mm -hmm. That's been preached over and over and over again, and it, and it hasn't changed as of yet. Well, I think this stuff, the stuff we're talking about today, Ant, is still new. Mm. Um, you know, we haven't seen this. And again, we don't know. It, it so much depends on the use, right? If, if, if you have this system that maps the relationships of all words that we have available, right, you could use that to query it and say, what are the biases in society? In that case, you don't want to clean up the biases. You want to know what they are. You want to know what they are. Okay. Yeah. Right. Or if you say, I want to, I want to use this to train children on their career opportunities. Well, then you have a completely different use and you're going to judge the output completely differently. So it's not about the AI is good or bad. It's right. what was the intent? How was it trained to what end? And is the output beneficial and useful or not? And then how do humans use it? Do the police use it badly? Do mortgage companies use it badly? Do doctors use it badly? The, the bad stuff is going to come with m misinterpretation and misuse from the humans after the fact. So it's not about fixing the AI. It's kind of the pentapixel thing is the AI doesn't have the bias. Society does, mm -hmm. or the training set did, mm -hmm. or the prompt did, or our own vision does. Uh, and and so Stacey's right. It's not simple, but it also isn't limited to this thing we call AI. Oh, you can't regulate. You can't regulate AI. That's so right. stupid. And I wish we would stop talking. We have to well, regulate. Aren't you the saying, use of yes, it. Stacey? Oh, what's the difference between regulating AI and regulating the use? You're saying we should the regulate use case, it. You have well, yeah. You you have to regulate the use of it already. We're seeing things like where, who uses like, it. Like you would say, it's okay oh, for me to use Mid Journey to generate pictures of professors, even if they're biased. Yeah, I'm not gonna like. I would point that out to you. I'd be like, look. Yeah, but it's not gonna be regulated. Is, I would hope. Right. No, you can't regulate there's, that. There's also the risk with regulation of regulatory capture, and I think that's what Sam Altman wanted. He. Well, yeah, but you know what? Regulatory was. capture is gonna happen regardless, and we see like they're just pissed because if you have like the option of regulatory capture, then they have to spend money on lobbyists. I mean, 
I hate I, I get that regulatory capture exists, but I hate that as an argument for not regulating anything because then you're in this like free fall, like everybody does whatever they yeah, want. Yeah, you just should pretend, just pay attention to who's asking for the regulations. Right, you totally should. And, and, and then when you bono, see who the is benefiting from yeah. the regulation. Yeah, right, right. But but what we're talking, I mean, and, and Jeff, you know, you, you brought up, Jeff is right in the sense that like you have to regulate the use of it and when you see use cases and you have to have regulations in place so you can actually demand that those like that a company is telling you when they're using an algorithm to make a decision so there's demand two, that you have access to it there's two what abouts that i would raise one is what about other nations what about china for instance who will we can't not do be anything governed about china. by well but they're not going to be governed by regulation. They're going to develop AIs. They're going to get increasingly powerful while we are hobbling. Or they're going to overregulate it, which one of the one of the senators was basically using it as a model, saying, well, China, China regulates this output. Maybe we should. Well, yeah. We have regulatory yeah. capture as an issue here, which is that the, the incumbents, influence, or because they care, influence legislation, and it ends up benefiting them. In China, the incumbents are the People's Republic of China, the government, the CCP. So... Uh, they were going to have it be influenced in such a way that it's to benefit them. Yep. So that's their version of regulatory capture. But that's the first what about. Uh, the other what about, uh, you know, which concerns me also is regulation can keep us from making progress in, 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 yes. in, in tradition. And, you know, this is one of the reasons they didn't regulate the Internet uh, initially. Maybe we should have. I don't know. But because it was a new an exciting, innovative sphere, they felt that it's too soon for government to intervene. And that these, could these hurt are, our development of AI. So we're not talking about regulating the development of AI. Well, they People were in the Senate, I, I know, I know. You're not, I know, you're but, not, I know but they but were. But that's what, so <laughs> you're, you're throwing your whatabouts in something. I'm proposing concrete regulatory steps that we can take to prevent actual harms from AI. And then you're, in response to that, you're throwing me whatabouts that actually don't relate to that at all. So if you want to ask me, like, what about regulatory capture? I would say, yeah, that happens. And we're going to have to look out for it. But that's not an excuse to not regulate. If you're going to ask, what if that stops us on innovation? I would say none of the steps and concrete proposals I've made actually stop okay. our ability to innovate. Stacey, but that's now, now put on your senator hat. I know Leo is normally the senator here. <laughs> Now, I would like All you right. to be in the Senate because the Senate is not a diverse body. So I should look like an and old white man. Yes, you should. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Or act like one. Um, so, I mean, uh, you know, as Lindsey Graham said, <laughs> oh, outright. Gosh, oh, no, you got to look grumpier. You could be uh, oh, an old dude. white woman like Dianne Feinstein. <laughs> oh, then you won't know where you are. Okay. Uh, Keep going, Jeff. So, I'm so, asked. What you. am I asking? Thank you. So, so <laughs> Lindsey Graham said, you know, should we, should we license? And Sam Altman said, yes. So this idea that that's part of what I think we're talking about here is not just the sensible things you're saying and I'm saying, but th where it's headed is the reflex was to say, it'll be okay if we license this. Now then it's pure uh, regulatory capture because then Sam Altman said, uh, well, just for us big guys, because I can handle it, right? I do not think we should license companies to explore AI if that's the question you're asking. Yes, that's the question. I do, that so, is a silly idea. I exactly. don't understand the, the, the premise of how is it how is that doable to license you license yeah. you can create a licensing regime to stop like i can't put up a nuclear power plant if i want there's okay. can't, you can't you can't be a barber right yeah <laughs> unless you right. go to well independent yeah. now you can now however get a gun and kill lots of people yeah, yeah. but you can't yeah. make an algorithm can't be a barber but you could also be someone that sells fruit on the side of the street in front of a business that had to go through all of their little Regulation. It's true, whatnot. but I mean, yeah. uh, if so this uh, is the same. Premise. If Queen Pruitt wants to be an esthetician, All right, she's going to have to go to the state board, yeah, and pass exams pay and take classes, pay a lot of fees. That, by the way, that is another form of regulatory capture because that that okay. keeps the number of estheticians low, right? If you love all things Android, well, I've got a show for you to check out. It's called All About Android, and I'll give you three guesses what we talk about. We talk about Android, the latest news, hardware, apps. We answer feedback. It's me, Jason Howell, Ron Richards, Wintwit Dow, and a whole cast 
of awesome characters talking about the operating system that we love. You can find all about Android at twit.tv slash AAA.